And what needed is a new, uh, a new approach that would be institutional and that would be uh, based on uh, the role of citizenships and not only of, of patronage. Welcome to the Inside the Middle East question and answer series at the Middle East Initiative. My name is Anna Boots and I'm a master's candidate at the Center for Middle Eastern Studies at Harvard University and editor-in-chief of the Harvard Journal for Middle Eastern Politics and Policy. Today we are joined by Hisham Aloui, a visiting fellow at the Weatherhead Center for International Affairs at Harvard University and a DPhil candidate in Oriental Studies at St. Anthony's College at Oxford University. Mr. Aloui, welcome to the program and thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. What is the current state of Tunisia's ongoing democratic transition following its revolution in 2011? Uh, I think the Tunisian, uh, Tunisian example is a, is a bright spot, although we have to be prudent and cautious. It is an example of uh, what we call pacted transitions in which Islamists and secular groups have bargained for a successful transition, successful beginning of institutionalization, but this has yet to consolidate. Uh, since then, we have seen a return to the old practices, a return to by the old uh, symbols of the old regime that have come back to power from the back door, and uh, the regime has yet to institutionalize this pact between the Islamists and uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the secularist is in a sense frozen. And it's uh, something that we see very often in pacted uh, transitions. The challenge is moving beyond that. We're seeing trouble uh, in, uh, in, in with the, the effort uh, to, conduct, uh, to conduct or at least, um, how can I say, introduce principles of transitional justice in the system. We've seen a lot of resistance from the old guard who have basically hijacked the project. But at the same time, uh, we see a lot of mobilization and vitality in civil society and many of these organizations which has pushed forth the transition. So it's a mixed picture and the last chapter has yet to be written. And when thinking about all of these challenges facing the region, what do you consider to be the important factors that distinguish North Africa as a region distinct from the Middle East more broadly? Well, I think uh, uh, we've talked already about Tunisia. Algeria and Morocco have not known this electoral democracy, this transition yet, but they are better positioned because they're in the Maghreb than the countries in the Mashrek. For one, these countries or this zone is far away from the confessional divide, which I just talked about. And they're far away from the revolutionary or counter-revolutionary forces. And in the case of Morocco, Morocco has the blessing uh, of not being exposed to the negative uh, aspects that, uh, that one encounters uh, with hydrocarbon rents. So you, you have these factors plus the fact that Morocco and Algeria, and especially Morocco, have a history of pluralism curtailed, uh, truncated, sometimes hollow, but a pluralism that within its contours nonetheless exists, a culture, a political culture of bargaining, um, of electoral accountability, the forms of democracy, even the routines of democracy, even if uh, they are shallow. Uh, but still, that is very important. Also, you have a civil society that is vibrant and that is there and that is playing an important role in diffusing norms and political and the democratic political culture. So if, if, if or when uh, democratization comes in Morocco and Algeria, I'm not saying that the regimes will initiate it, but I'm saying that this will be an unintended consequences as a result of the unsustainability of the status quo because of the socioeconomic problems. And if and when that happens, I think these countries will be better equipped uh, to embark on such a, pa a path, although it will be very difficult. And I think it will be, it'll be, it'll be drawn out for some time. So in light of that, what do you make of the protests that have been underway in the reef region of northern Morocco for over a year now? What do you think that the real root causes are? And 
as a follow-up, perhaps, what do you see? Do you see any real hope for a change in the balance of power in Morocco in the near future? The Moroccan regime or political system's priority today is not democracy, and has never been democracy. The regime's priority was always survival, and it sometimes it meant adapting to challenges, and it it meant sometimes assuming the trappings and the facade of democracy, but rarely the substance of democracy. So that's an important, an important distinction to keep in mind. But as it adapts, sometimes where it has it adapted, it has created spaces in which uh, there can be some, some maneuvering and some actions by uh, the, uh, the, um, the democratic forces. The, 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 before I come to the reef, I think the, the, the problematic of the monarchy has been overly studied, and we know the tools that the monarchy has, economic power, uh, the security apparatus, cultural persuasion, um, and geopolitical influences by friends like, like France, Spain, the United States, we all know that. But what's understudied also is the opposition. Why hasn't the opposition, given this uh, more, I wouldn't say liberal, but more open framework in Morocco, why haven't they been able to mount a real challenge to the status quo? And why haven't they been organized to, to provoke a breakthrough and to exploit the spaces that are out there? And that, it, it's not a mystery, but it, it's out there and it's something that we ought to be able to focus more than the monarchy. Now, coming to the reef issue, the reef is, a, is an old, new problem. It is old because in the 60s and 70s, the Moroccan monarchy has deliberately marginalized uh, the reef because it was uh, restless, because it was in a state of dissidence. And there has been much marginalization and much violence. In the last 15 years, the Moroccan state has tried to reverse that by putting in a lot of investments in the north, by engaging uh, many citizens in the north. But regretfully, this has, been, this has taken place in an ad hoc and discretionary ways. And it has suffered from a lack of an institutional approach. And hence, uh, they were not able to overcome these problems. And what needed is a new uh, a new approach that would be institutional and that would be uh, based on uh, the role of citizenships and not only of, of patronage. Now, regretfully, it is going to be very difficult, even with goodwill, to reverse the situation in the reef. It'll take a long time before uh, we ameliorate things. So, uh, uh, what is the solution? Uh, the good news is that no matter how elusive this in, uh, uh, solution is, the good news is that with all its faults, there is still dialogue. It's tense, but there's still dialogue between the central state and uh, the Reefen uh, movement. And the Reefen movement, for uh, very specific reasons, is not, is not uh, going to be pacified so easily because uh, marginalization has led to immigration, and as a result, there's a diaspora outside that is supporting the reef. Uh, it has been marginalized, and it has entered into narcotics and smuggling. M many, there are many networks of smuggling and narcotics in, 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 in the reef precisely because uh, there, there was a need to, uh, uh, to let off some steam, if you will. But the result has been that there have been many networks constituted, constituted that are autonomous and that are not vulnerable or exposed to state control. So this movement is not going to go away. It's going to stay. The, 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 the real test is to see whether this problem or this problematic will be replicated elsewhere, will migrate elsewhere to other regions or not. And that is, has yet to be seen. So this is an old problem in its new manifestation, and it's happening in a broader framework of democratic deficit uh, uh, in which 
we see that clearly the status quo is unsustainable, but we there's still it, it's very hard to say what will break that impasse, what other movements will emerge, what will change that present topography. Thank you so, so much for joining us, Mr. Thank Rowley. you very much for inviting me. Thank you.